guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I wanted to talk today about anxiety. Um, the, the videos that I've done on anxiety, uh, and particularly 5-hydroxytryptophan five, five um, and serotonin levels, uh, seem to attract uh, the most questions. I seem to get the most um, uh, requests for further information from those videos. And I was looking through the videos that I've done, and I, I, I've, I've talked about the treatments um, for anxiety and some nutritional um, strategies that you can use to reduce anxiety. But I've never really talked about the causes of anxiety. So I thought what I would do is, if I do a, a video on, on, on what I believe through my research to be uh, one of the causes of anxiety, uh, possibly the cause of anxiety, a contributing factor towards anxiety. If I do that video, it's a very it, I will be able to refer people to that rather than answering the questions uh, that I get in terms of what maybe causes uh, or what causes uh, people's anxiety. Um, Anxiety is, is difficult to define medically. It's really a feeling of uh, being uncomfortable. Uh, the symptoms that you get with anxiety, anyone that's suffered from anxiety um, will, will know that the, the symptoms you get are a rapid heartbeat. Um, sometimes you can sweat. Um, you feel uncomfortable. You feel nervous. Um, there, is a, there is a feeling of dread about you. Uh, and if these symptoms are overwhelming, uh, we call them a panic attack. Uh, and a panic attack is really just a um, a very uh, a severe uh, case of anxiety, and, and 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 certain people do suffer from panic attacks, and they get them regularly, um, and it, it's it's not a very nice sensation. Um, some people are uh, some people are anxious uh, chronically on a lower level. Some people tend to be fine most of the time and then suffer from panic attacks. But there is certainly a group of people in the population that seem to have this susceptibility to anxiety, however it manifests itself. Um, the mainstream medical treatment for anxiety is to give a, a, a serotonin boosting drug, such as a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, um, for example, Prozac. That's the mainstream medical treatment. Um, the 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 thinking behind that is that the the, the drug will boost serotonin, and uh, serotonin is the cause of uh, low serotonin levels are the cause of anxiety. Um, the success rate of that um, is not great, and it really is only treating the symptoms. It's not really getting to the cause. I don't think of uh, of the of the anxiety. Uh, it does seem to help some people in the short term. Uh, it certainly boosts mood. Um, whether it actually um, is beneficial to to all the people with anxiety, it's difficult to say. But certainly, those people I know that have anxiety and have taken um, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor have certainly found an improvement in mood. Um, in the long term, I don't think it really helps, and it, it can actually make it worse. But if it's very severe, it might it might be uh, for some people the first port of call is to go to their doctor. That might be what they're prescribed. Um, if we actually have a look at the causes of um, anxiety, we have to say nobody really knows what the cause of anxiety is. I wouldn't want to say that I know the cause of anxiety. I've looked and I've researched about it. There are many different theories. One theory that I think is is very interesting that that I tend to tend to um, I tend to subscribe to. I think this is possibly uh, uh, heading along the, the, the right lines in terms of what is actually causing anxiety. Is the is the theory about lactic, uh, lactic acid, lactate in the blood. Um, there have been studies where where people with anxiety have been injected with lactate, uh, and that induces their panic attacks. Lactate is uh, a substance that's produced naturally uh, in. Uh, the body as a byproduct of anaerobic respiration in cells. Generally, uh, in in humans, uh, in in all cells, um, cells will pre preferably uh, respire aerobically. They will use oxygen um, to to be able to produce energy, and they can use oxygen with glucose or fatty acids uh, in order to be able to generate um, energy. There is another pathway, an anaerobic pathway during times when uh, oxygen supply is limited or absent uh, in humans it tends to be when uh, for example when exercise becomes excessive set muscles skeletal muscle cells will tend to um, 
uh, generate um, uh, energy anaerobically, and the byproduct of that is instead of the, uh, the, the the product instead of pyruvate being produced, which is the end point of glycolysis, and that pyruvate passing into um, the citric acid cycle and passing down the electron transport chain, ultimately to, um, to be uh, ultimately to be um, converted into carbon dioxide and water. Instead, the pyruvate uh, it cannot pass through the um, electron transport chain because oxygen is not available. Oxygen is the, the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. So instead, the pyruvate is converted into, lact into lactic acid, um, and that lactic acid dissociates in the blood to become lactate, and that is therefore um, a way of um, it, it, it's a way of uh, removing the uh, the waste product, as it were, of of glycolysis in the cell. Um, and, and still allowing the generation of, of energy from glucose. Now that's an anaerobic process and uh, the byproduct of that obviously is that um, lactic acid levels and lactate levels in the blood will increase uh, and this is what you feel when you are performing for example weightlifting or you're sprinting and you feel that pain in your muscle that is the hydrogen ion content of your muscle increasing as you produce more lactate. Um, those hydrogen ions um, they interact with nerve endings and that causes a, a pain and that's that's the pain you feel uh, when you're when you're exercising that lactate ultimately um, is removed from the body um, the, the the body has many buffer systems that prevent the um, the ph of the blood changing too much what's interesting is that if you inject people with anxiety uh, with lactate they suffer from panic attacks uh, also if you um, measure the lactate levels in um, people with anxiety they tend to have uh, more lactate and less pyruvate than those people uh, that don't suffer from panic attacks or from anxiety so they tend to have elevate in other words they have elevated levels of um, uh, lactic acid production elevated um, uh, amounts of lactate in the blood so from this we can uh, we can we, we can we can probably infer that those people are either producing too much lactic acid or they're not excreting it uh, quickly enough. It's not breaking down, it's not being um, removed from the body. Um, it could also be that they're hypersensitive to it. Um, there might be they produce more of it, but they're also hypersensitive to it. No, it it's, reading the literature, it's very confusing. No one really understands how um, this lactate would be able to, uh, to, to induce anxiety, but certainly um, people with with anxiety do appear to have this uh, elevated levels of lactic acid and I think this is this is possibly one of the the most interesting theories that I've read certainly uh, about anxiety um, so what can you do if you've if, if you've got higher levels of, of, of lactic acid uh, in in your in your body is there anything you can do well it could be that there's nothing you can do it might be that biochemically this is just a, a, a certain people have a have a perhaps a propensity to to generate um, some of their energy a proportion of their energy a higher proportion of their energy uh, anaerobically and this uh, causes an increase in in lactic acid production in which case there might be nothing you can do but you can um obviously one of the one of the one of the one of the um, downstream effects of it, of producing too much lactic acid is is an, a, a decrease in the ph of your blood in other words your blood becomes more as uh, uh, more acid and diet is very a good way of affecting um, your uh, blood pH. Um, and I've talked about this before, particularly with uh, in terms of bone health. Um, osteoporosis is caused by, uh, possibly caused by uh, having too uh, too higher hydrogen ion content in the blood. This causes the uh, the body to leach minerals from the the bone, uh, particularly you know calcium divalent cations into the into the blood, and that. That then uh, buffers the, the the hydrogen ion content of the blood and um, increasing the pH again. So acid blood is bad for the bones. Uh, and one of the ways you can counter that is by eating a very high plant-based diet. Um, plants contain compounds that are converted in the body into effective buffers of these hydrogen ions in the blood and you can you can raise the pH of your um, your blood in other words you can reduce the acidity of your blood by eating a lot of plant foods um, now this is me theorizing um, I would suggest that if you can alter the pH of your blood through um, the ability uh, through consuming plant foods and you are of one of those uh, one of those people that suffers from anxiety and has a higher concentration of lactic acid in your blood 
it would seem sensible to me that if you consumed less animal protein and more uh, plant foods, in other words, the, the, the animal proteins are converted into sulfuric acid ultimately in the body and that uh, this is what causes in the diet this is what causes a uh, the acidification of the blood if you lower the amount of animal proteins that you consume you're reducing that load of sulfuric acid that is entering into the blood if at the same time you also increase the amount of plant foods that you consume you will be uh, increasing the number of these the production of these buffers that at the same time can reduce the hydrogen ion content of the blood. Now remember that lactic acid when it's produced enters into the plasma and it will dissociate in the aqueous environment of the plasma into lactate. In other words the hydrogen ions will be in uh, the plasma and that is what will cause the acidification of the blood. If that is what is actually causing the anxiety if you increase the um, consumption of plant foods and decrease the consumption of um, animal um, animal proteins you have a very good chance of buffering uh, those uh, any excess hydrogen ions that pass into the blood um, this is very theoretical it's me putting together uh, pieces of a puzzle uh, I, I read quite a lot about this and that there doesn't seem to be um, you know any consensus on this and certainly there are many other theories on anxiety but of all of the theories that I've read that makes the most sense to me uh, based on um, the experiments that have been done with people with anxiety um, there is another school of thought that suggests that people with anxiety uh, possibly have low blood sugar levels but um, experimentally it's been shown that certainly if you lower the blood sugar levels of uh, people with anxiety it doesn't always induce panic attacks um, that doesn't mean it doesn't have a contributing uh, contributory factor because we, what we all know that um, when uh, certain people uh, when you get blood low blood sugar levels say you've been exercising for a long period of time or you haven't eaten um, you haven't eaten frequently or or, or, or or recently your blood sugar drops you do tend to get some of the symptoms of anxiety uh, you, because the body does release adrenaline uh, in order to counteract the, um, uh, the the low blood sugar levels to in order to be able to force um, glycogen to be uh, released into the into the blood from the from the liver so adrenaline is one of the things that can um, cause uh, anxiety like effects um, the problem is that experiments that have been done on people with anxiety they don't always get panic attacks or anxiety from low blood sugar levels um, so there may be more to it than that um, but that doesn't mean it's not a contributory factor and one of the things I would suggest to all those people that possibly do suffer from uh, anxiety is that you don't let that happen by eating small meals regularly uh, you perhaps eat carbohydrate sources that are uh, more slowly released into uh, the blood and you try and maintain uh, stable blood sugar levels that's this that should really be what everybody does for health anyway but I think if you do suffer from anxiety um, slightly increasing your carbohydrate um, uh, content of your diet uh, will have the effect of, of boosting your serotonin levels uh, and if you consume things like uh, pulses and grains uh, whole grains and pulses um, uh, and uh, legumes if you so if you consume those uh, those slow release carbohydrates um, and, and you eat frequent meals throughout the day maybe maybe eating up to six times a day I don't mean full meals I mean grazing throughout the day uh, and you maintain a blood sugar level like that with good protein content throughout uh, your meals trying to base your protein content away from um, animal proteins which may have this um, acidifying effect I think that might help some people to try and minimize the damage that they get from this these anxiety uh, attacks and these panic attacks throughout the day. Of course there are I think psychological effect um, psychological contributing factors uh, lifestyle uh, and how you interact uh, and the stress that you're under will also have an effect uh, it would be very foolish of me to say that nutrition is the only thing uh, and biochemistry is the only thing that is causing uh, anxiety and panic attacks clearly there's a psychological component as well in some people um, stress does play a part but again stress is related to the adrenal system which may mean that uh, if you can limit that and limit the uh, limit the production of adrenaline you might be able to stabilize um, your your mood and therefore not fall into these periods where you go uh, and suffer through anxiety it's obvious that some people are going to be more anxious than others naturally um, everybody is you know has different uh, temperaments um, some people don't get anxious at all. Some people get anxious over the smallest things. Some people, uh, I, I think, 
no matter what they do, will never be able to completely eliminate uh, this, these panic attacks and this anxiety they have. But what I'm trying to do is give you the advice to be able to minimise for yourself um, the detrimental effects it has on uh, on your life and your and your lifestyle. Um, so I hope that was interesting. If you if you if you if you perhaps um, try that, if you've if you if you're not currently eating a, a very healthy diet uh, and you do suffer from anxiety or from panic attacks, try and look at some of my videos on how to stabilise your blood sugar, and also look at some of my other videos on perhaps on bone health on how to deacidify your blood in order to be able to uh, to 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 keep your blood within the normal pH and get rid of uh, any uh, excess acid within the blood uh, those are two steps that possibly could have um, very beneficial effects so I hope that was interesting um, if you've got any comments on this video uh, please leave them in the comments box below uh, and as always I'll try to get back to you and I will see you next week for another video and in the meantime take care <laughs>